Welcome to the Miracles Happen Fertility Podcast, where it's all about using the power of your mind to create hope, health, and miracles on your fertility journey. And now your host, a dash of science and a heap of spirit, Dr. Maria Rothenberger. Hey, welcome to the Miracles Happen Fertility Podcast. This is Dr. Maria Rothenberger, your host. I'm a therapist and coach specializing in fertility issues. And I recently, in July of 2020, came out as a spirit baby communicator, spirit baby intuitive, meaning I can connect to um, the baby that you are meant to have or babies and babies that have passed on as well. And sometimes other entities come through to assist that process. So it's really been, oh, goodness, so much fun and um, eye-opening and healing on so many levels. I just enjoy that work so much. So um, by the way, I just updated my website a little bit and you'll now be able to find about find out more information about spirit baby work on my website, drmariarothenberger.com. Also on the first page there, um, there's a choice of one of three free gifts that you can get if you subscribe to the email newsletter and the newsletter is of course you can opt out at any time but all kinds of information on my upcoming book transcending infertility which is due out november 21st 2020 what i am freaking out about in a good way (laughs) about that finally happening because it's been a long time coming and if you do purchase the book on the first day of official publication, you will get a ton of free gifts. I am also um, going to be hosting a live, I think maybe more than one live interaction either on Instagram or Facebook on um, November 21st with more um, potential for winning prizes. So um, find out more at transcendinginfertilitybook.com. And by the way, if you like this podcast, the Miracles Happen Fertility Podcast, please take a moment to um, offer a little bit of feedback, a rating on whatever uh, platform you're listening to this on, and maybe a little writing. I love reading what you have to say, and your thoughts and opinions mean a lot to me, really. They, they really do. Um, if you prefer to give feedback privately, you can also um, head on over to my website, drmariarothenberger.com and just click contact and you can send me a message there. All right. That's it for the updates today. Uh, I am sitting in my closet, which is actually one of the best like recording studios I've ever been in. It's actually quite helpful to have all this clothing around me to buffer the noises of the uh, children in school right now from home because thank you, COVID. They're actually doing quite well. It is stressful for all of us, um, but goodness, the whole world is struggling with this right now. Um, Thinking about you as well on this new um, political horizon in the U.S., we are coming upon a new um, election. And I'm just encouraging you to vote, 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 vote. All right. So I'm going to be talking to Josephine today. Josephine has quite the whirlwind of a story. And uh, she started out in business and had her own fertility journey and moved into mindfulness as a way to um, handle life. And I, I just love what she has to say, because obviously, if you know me, you, you followed me before. And, if, and if you, even if you haven't, here's what you're going to learn. I am a massively huge proponent of meditation, especially for fertility. And actually, if you choose to head over to my website, you'll see potentially a pop up too that talks about um, another way to sign on to my newsletter. That's a fertility meditation kit. And there's an ebook all about 
why meditation is essential for your fertility. So Josephine talks about mindfulness in a glo- more of a global sense too. She's obviously big into meditation, mindfulness specifically for fertility, but she actually has a podcast a podcast called Responding to Life, Living Reflectively Through a Journey of Health, Fertility and Parenthood, and it's heavy on the use of meditation in handling life well. It's fantastic, and I absolutely recommend it. For now, let's talk with Josephine and her fertility journey. And you're, of course, welcome to get all of her information on the show notes for this podcast episode. All right, let's talk to Josephine. Hi, Josephine. Welcome to the Miracles Happen podcast. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for having me. Heck yeah. I can't wait to hear your story. (laughs) (laughs) And I can't wait for others to hear your story too. So, but if you could start with just like a mini bio, like what do you do and why, how did you come to do the work that you do? Wonderful. So I basically, I like to say that I help people overcome adversity to find joy, which is what happened throughout my own life. And I'm just taking lessons from my own journey and applying it to to help other people overcome the challenges that they have with infertility, with parenting, and and basically just with life. And, you know, I began my journey with trying to conceive my family almost 20 years ago, and it encompassed IVF, miscarriages, international adoption, and surrogacy. And then we finally created our family of five, and I coupled that experience with my meditation training to now help people on their own journeys. Yeah. Okay. When you say family of five, do you mean parents included? No. Right. <laughs> no. No. Five There's kids. More to that. Yeah. Yeah. We, our first son, we adopted from Kazakhstan. Then I carried a set of twins through IVF. And then our surrogate, our amazing surrogate, carried another set of twins for us. So that's how we came to the five kids. Yeah. Yeah. I, I wanted to highlight that because <laughs> this is five <laughs> children. So family of, well, children of five plus parents, right? Yes. So I'm hoping before we get to the meditation piece, are you willing to share a little bit about, I mean, you talked about how your, your children came to you. I'm wondering if you're willing to share a little bit about the journey, what that was like for you. And when you found meditation or these other coping strategies and other strategies to deal with life, deal yeah, with parenthood, absolutely. journey to parenthood. Yeah. Well, we, we always knew that we'd have to start our family right away with IVF just because of an illness that my husband had back when we were still dating in college. And so we went straight into IVF and it didn't work. We tried it for a number of years with some chemical pregnancies, and then we switched facilities, and I became pregnant with twins that I carried to uh, the 17 weeks into the second trimester, and then out of the blue, um, lost them, and it was at that point when I really I was forced to pause and to grieve their loss, but then also I took that opportunity to really reflect upon our situation and be honest with what I could handle. And after doing IVF for so many years, I knew that I just, I didn't have the heart to do it anymore. So that's when we pivoted to international adoption and we decided to go with Kazakhstan because it was a little bit shorter of a program and we that's where we met our son that we adopted at 10 months and then life was wonderful you know we spent a good year just enjoying him and just enjoying being parents and then we were able to entertain the idea of pursuing IVF perhaps one more time mm-hmm. so we switched to a third facility okay. and then uh, became pregnant with twins again and this time they threw the kitchen sink at me Um, They tied up my cervix, they put me on bed rest, and I carried those twins to term, and they were healthy, and it was was wonderful. And so you think that's the, like, that's the end of the story. But it was at that point when I finally had the three kids that, you know, out of the blue, I was training for a race, 
And all of that trauma from trying to conceive finally caught up with me Mm. and manifested itself into an eating disorder. And what came about in my therapy for that was that I had all these issues that I I held on to of this, um, this need to control my situation because I couldn't control trying to conceive this need to not fail at something again because I had failed at trying to get pregnant so many times Mm -hmm. and, and then so many other issues. And, and it was almost as it was my body and my life was telling me, you need to stop and really address these underlying issues. You can't just sweep them under the rug. And so it, it was at that point then I started to really take a journey within and And it was also around that same time that we started to entertain the idea of pursuing surrogacy because we had a number of frozen embryos, but I couldn't carry again. And when it finally came to be that we could afford surrogacy by saving up, we partnered with this amazing woman who we are just forever indebted to. And uh, she carried a set of twins for us, twin boys, and they... They completed, they completed our modern day family is what I like to call it. Yes. And yeah, so that's kind of it in a quick wow. nutshell. <laughs> I, I don't know if you could even fit all that in a little nutshell. That's amazing. And just to be clear, you, you couldn't carry again because high risk stuff or. Yeah, that- I was a number of like high risk and then just taking into consideration um, lifestyle and what we'd have to do again in order to make that happen. Right. Right. Okay. Wow. It's amazing. And I'm sure it's a lot more detailed and harrowing at some points than you're even able to say today, but enter meditation because that helps, I don't know, quiet the harrowingness. (laughs) (laughs) Um, My, my listeners know that I'm a giant meditation person. Um, I, feel like that is the absolute number one tool that, you know, quote, saved me or helped me transcend this difficulty that is the fertility world. And so when I saw that that's your, like a giant focus of yours, I jumped on the chance to connect with another person that also sees so much value in this. So I'm wondering if you can speak to that. Tell us when meditation came into your life and what it's meant for you and how it continues to serve you. Yeah. I love speaking with people who are like-minded and who just really get meditation. It's just, it's, it warms my heart to know that there are other people fighting the good fight to spread the word about the benefits of meditation. Mm -hmm. And so for me, I began on this journey once we had all five kids, because then life became just next level chaotic. And I had also started working again, which I hadn't done for a number of years because I stayed home with the kiddos. And it just got to be so overwhelming that I started to seek out other ways to really address my wellness and my well-being. And that's when I dabbled personally into meditation. And once I started, I got hooked and I knew that I had to take it just another step further. And that's when I deepened my practice by doing a teacher training program. And it was during that, that program, you know, I went into it thinking that this would just be for myself. But as I went through that program, it really just evolved organically in that I could take this messaging, these lessons, these strategies to help people, you know, in various facets of life that I had that I had experienced myself. So it began first with corporate because I was, you know, in management consulting and business development for a number of years. And so I was able to tailor it to corporations and the, the workers there. And then I thought about my own experiences with infertility. And I thought, you know what, I wish, I wish, I wish I had this back when I was trying to conceive, because I feel like I would not have been so wouldn't have been so lost and isolated and I would have had an outlet, just another outlet for these overwhelming feelings. And, you know, back then, back, it was almost 20 years ago, 
we didn't have these ideas of self-care. It's such a relatively new topic. No. Nope. But, you know, my only outlet back then was working out. And there were many times through IVF when you couldn't do that. So I was, in, I was just like at my wit's end during those times. And I, you know, what meditation gives to me now is that it helps me to sort of slow down. It helps me to tune in and appreciate the present moments. And all my life, I just, I was on the go, you know, especially now with the five kids. And yeah. so once I started like deepening my training, I saw the benefit of slowing down and tuning within and really appreciating the present moment. And I knew that I couldn't just keep that to myself. And so that's, that's how we're here talking today. I love that part. I mean, to end on that note right there would be like, I, I I consider it like a travesty to just end right there because that, that part about, I can't not share this is so important. I feel like we can expand on that forever because that, that benefit that you got is you know that it's not just, I like what you said before, it's not, this isn't just for me. This mm -hmm. is for everybody. Mm -hmm. And so I love that you picked that out of there. Like I can't not share this. Mm. So yay. <laughs> I just want to highlight that when you get goods like that, it's like you can't, you feel so filled up inside that you have to you'll burst if you don't share it. And that's exactly right. my experience. Mm -hmm. um, so, oh, I was wondering about the type of meditation that you practice. Well, you know, for myself, I just do what we taught, what we were taught at our training program was, you know, a, a number of different ways through mantra, mindfulness, um, what they wanted to really impart upon us uh, in the program was to make it as accessible as possible. So for myself and how I teach others, you know, I tell them to go with how you're feeling for the day. So there are times when I will just sit in silence and I will, my, that will be my point of focus. I won't have a mantra. I'm not doing any sort of mindfulness. I'm just being and allowing that expansion. And then there are days when I just, I just need some help and I will need to go to that app, which I have numerous apps, which is fantastic. Yes. Um, or some guided music or something based on how I'm feeling that day, especially for my second meditation of the day in the evening. That's usually when I do need that little bit of guidance to yeah. just sort of reset me because, you know, it was just such an overwhelming day. It was very stressful that I need that meditation that's specifically for anxiety or empowerment. Uh, typically in the morning is when I wake up and I just feel so open and free that that quiet sort of meditation that has nothing is usually is what suits me. And, and so that's what I like to practice for myself, but then also preach to, to, my, to my audience and to my clients is that really tune in to yourself. And then by definition, by doing the meditation, you are able to better tune into yourself because you're, yes. you're creating that connection, right? You're able to get in into how you're feeling much quicker with every little meditation that you do. And so then you'll instantly tune in and know, okay, this is how I'm feeling right now. So this is what I need. And, and, and then go from there, right? And then to always be willing to try new things. Yeah, I love that you said that because as you were talking, I'm like, the tuning in is partly a meditation, right? Because you're being still and tuning in. I love mm -hmm. that. And it also, you know, many people feel like when I talk about meditation, that they have to have this formal sitting down om in silence or chanting practice. And I'm like, no, that's not, <laughs> not what it has to be. It has to resonate with you, right? Right. Yeah. That's why I don't bring up like, oh, I do transcendental or blah, blah, right. blah. You know, I just try to make it as accessible to people as possible because it's such a hurdle to even, to even try to fathom adding on something new and especially something that you're unfamiliar with. So yeah. bringing it to just easier terms to sort of, to take in is, 
yeah. how I like to talk about it. Yes. Simple, simple, simple. I love it. Good. What are, speaking of simple, can you get really simple around the top three things that you suggest for people to start meditating? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, the top three things that I like to suggest when you're, you're just starting out would be first to tie it into an existing ritual. So for example, when I wake up, I always brush my teeth, right? So I'm either going to put it before that or after that, because then it's just connected to something that I'm always going to do. And that just gives me a greater chance of sticking with the, a new routine. Second suggestion is to start small. People think that they have to do like 20 minutes in the morning and 20 minutes a day. If you're just starting out, you know, just it's really baby steps. If you can do a couple minutes, great. And then just slowly build from there. And you don't have to ramp up quickly. At any little bit that you can do is to your benefit. And then the third suggestion would be to know when to get help, which I already mentioned before in terms of getting help with an app, doing something online with a teacher, just mm -hmm. anything to really give you some support and guidance. Because like I said, it's such an, a big like topic and idea and it can get overwhelming and you don't want that. You want to make it as easy to, to do so that you continue doing it. And all of these different ways that we have online now are, are fanta fantastic ways to help you do that. Oh gosh, there are so many now. I remember <laughs> when I was doing my doctoral research, I've mentioned this on my podcast before that I wanted to do my dissertation work on meditation, specifically mindfulness and fertility stuff. And they were like, no, that's ridiculous. <laughs> Nobody does that. There's not enough research out there to support it. Blah, 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 blah. Now there's so much yeah. that it can be overwhelming. Yes. So I yeah. love your suggestions because it does it just gives people a starting point and you don't have to do all the things. Don't have to, you just start right. small. So good. Um, and then knowing of course, when you need that support. So I'm wondering also what do, when you're, when, when clients come to you and you have this specific focus of meditation, how do you help them determine that this meditation practice is part of this new way of being like that's part of i hate to use the word like that's an answer you know because obviously it's more complicated than that but how do you help people identify this as one way to move through this difficult experience of fertility issues that's a great question so when i you know when i talk about meditation and trying to get people to incorporate it into their lifestyle uh, for example, with, with fertility, uh, I'll always bring like a real life situation into it. So for example, yeah. with, with infertility, right? You're, you're at many doctor's appointments and usually, you know, you're receiving information, but then when you receive that information, let's say that it's just negative information. It's not the results that you wanted. And once you hear it, you're just not there. You're, you are somewhere else. You are thinking about, you know, all of the past things that may have contributed to this, or you're thinking about the future, what ifs, like, oh, now what, are, what am I going to do? You know, all of these things, but you are definitely not in the present moment. And what's, how I sort of bring it down to them in terms of explaining how it could benefit them in that situation is that when you practice meditation, when you practice mindfulness, you're practicing bringing present in the moment. And so every time you practice that, even though, even if it is just a couple minutes, right, you are practicing how to allow thoughts, distractions, anything to come in, gently acknowledging it, not holding on to it, letting it go, and then returning back to your point of focus, whether it's your breath, your mantra, whatever. And so you can apply that to that same situation. So you receive the bad news, right? And you can take in that information allow it to just go without holding on to it so that you can return back into that moment with the doctor, with the nurse, and to really be there so that you can understand what are your next steps? What does this really mean to you versus what you're attributing it to? 
right? Or what you're giving the explanations for this result. And that allows you to, to really tune in to the present moment. And that's what you're practicing every time you sit down for meditation. That is perfect. I can't even name the number of times that I was in a doc's office and I really wasn't listening or hearing or understanding because I was off in yeah. trauma world, you know. That's so emotional, um, yeah. So emotional, right. And because we're so triggered all the time through this process, it's easy to get lost in that emotion mind place. So, right, being, and, and how you mentioned it too, this gently letting go, this acknowledging the presence of this difficulty and gently letting it go so that you can stay present. There's no fighting. It's mm -hmm. just inviting it in, watching it go. Um, I love that. All right. So I want to talk a little bit because you have a podcast too. It's called Responding to Life, which I'm sure you have some fertility stuff in there too. But this this is why meditation is so powerful, right? I, we, we talk about this within the context of fertility stuff, but damn, it's so useful for the rest of your life. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm wondering about how you talk to people about using meditation for just daily life stuff, whether you have no children, 10 children, whether you have a really harrowing career, whether you, I don't know what the difficulty might be. Oh, I noted in the questions that I sent to you about like current social and political climate in the US, like that's pretty rough right now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, how do you talk to people about using meditation for these kinds of things? Right. So it, you know, it is similar to that example of, of the fertility situation. But as you mentioned, I do have that podcast called Responding to Life. And that came about from my teacher, my meditation training program, because one of the things that, you know, our teacher, David G imparted upon us was this oh, idea David of, G. oh, sorry yeah. to interrupt you. Oh, no. <laughs> oh my gosh. Who doesn't love David G? I love him. Yeah. Oh. I did recently described him as my spiritual teddy bear because oh, yes, I think of a lovey as so, so comforting. Right. And yes, that's, that's how exactly feel. how I feel every time I'm in his presence, whether it's a zoom meditation or oh. in person, he's just gives me comfort and spirituality and just makes me feel so good. I love it. Oh, he's um, amazing. Yeah. He was, it was amazing to have him as my teacher. And one of the things that he always said to us was this idea of responding to life and how you can respond or you can react. And the benefit of meditation is that it allows us to respond versus reacting in, you know, conditioned, conditioned responses, habits, you know, emotions, and instead, when we approach a situation, we can come from a place of clarity. We can come from a place of peace and mindfulness and positivity because we've taken a step back. We've allowed ourselves to pause yeah. and just almost look at the situation from like afar or above or whatever, just stepping away from it, both physically and mentally, to just give ourselves that pause. And... And like you said, with all of those things that are happening, you know, in the social and political climate, this practice of meditation allows us to do just that, to practice responding to life by practicing this pause. And the pause is every time we sit for that meditation and sit and just witness whatever our point of attention is, if it's our breath, if it's a mantra, if it's music, whatever it is. But we're learning how to take that pause, to slow down, to be present, and then return back to life in a more mindful and positive way. And, and so that's how you can apply it to any situation you're in, whether you're a parent, whether you're in the office or working from home, just any situation really can benefit from that pause, from that reflection, and then that that mindful response. Yeah. And I love that, that, um, you highlight that pause part and it makes me immediately think of, I don't know if you've had this experience with your audience or clients before who've talked about their experience of meditation, but when I work with people, that pause is a cause for alarm for people in the beginning. 
but then they realize that it's actually more efficient to create this pause and then respond mm -hmm. rather than having this big reaction from a place of panic. So they realize the value of this creating this pause and settling in and being still with what's happening because then they're able to efficiently move through decision-making processes. Mm -hmm. And it's like, oh, I didn't realize that. I feel right. less, less stuck, even though that initial pause creates this feeling of stuck, right? Mm -hmm. But the more that you do it, it's like, oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we're not conditioned to, to re you know, act in that way, right? right? Life is always just on the go. We need to be fast. Things are moving so quickly. Things are changing yeah. so quickly that we need to match you know, we feel pressured to match our actions and right. how we how we like say things but you're right in that the pause if you just take it even though it's scary in the beginning when you're just trying it out mm -hmm. you know it really will be to your benefit and then the more you practice it you know the pause becomes less of a hurdle probably not as long and right. and then you get great results from it you do and that's within the fertility context too. It's, you know, this, okay, this cycle didn't work. Now what, now what, now what, now what, now what? Okay, we're moving on to the next one, moving on to the next one, um, this reaction. But if, the, if folks do create this pause in between, oh my gosh, so much wisdom comes from that. Yeah, it's tough with the, I acknowledge that it is very tough to do that with mm -hmm. infertility because it's so time sensitive. Mm -hmm. But when I, you know, when I coach it to my clients, I'm not asking them to take like weeks on end for a pause, even if they can do it periodically for just like a moment, maybe an hour, even just, right. just to hour? do it, you know, and not to feel pressured to just do that next cycle. Because, you know, I, I'm not, that's how I did it for those first two, three years. I went back to back on these IVF cycles because wow. I put trust in the doctor. I figured this was my only option. And, you know, I didn't question that. I didn't advocate for myself. I just kept going and because I didn't want to lose out on time. And, and frankly, it, it was too scary to confront those emotions and to think about okay, maybe this isn't working. What am I going to do? It's scary to think that you have to switch facilities and almost feel like you're starting over or in that, that case for us where we just decided that it just wasn't even working anymore, that we had to move to adoption. Like yeah. those are scary things to have to confront and have to admit to. But, you know, just taking a little pause every now and then will, it will be so helpful to you in terms of your mental and your emotional well-being. Yeah. Thank you for simplifying it there too. Like really just an hour, just an hour of like settling and not having to figure out your next steps. Beautiful. Thank you for that. Uh, so Josephine, any other words of wisdom or pieces of inspiration you might have for folks? Yeah. Um, so, you know, through this process, we can feel so out of control and we can begin to lose sight of who we were when we first began and sitting in med meditation, it gives us so many benefits. But the three things that, you know, I would love for your audience to consider if they want to give it a try, if you're on your fertility journey, is to, to like control, take back your control via your breath, right? We feel like we're out of control, like this situation, there's nothing we can do about it. But we are, we do have the power over our breath. And the breath is so amazing because that is, that's the gateway from moving from a state of stress into a state of relaxation. And mm -hmm. that's in your control. So if you simply can just slow down your breath and move yourself from this, the, this state of like feeling anxious and bring yourself into a state of calm, that's powerful. And you're taking back a piece of control in your life and in the situation. And then, you know, to sit in meditation, even if it's just for a few minutes, you then get to like tap into the moment, but then you're also reconnecting to yourself mm -hmm. and you're reconnecting back to mm -hmm. slowly, hopefully over time to that person that you were before you were trying to conceive. 
that kind of gets lost in the shuffle, that whose light gets dimmed, that we don't recognize sometimes because we're just so single, single minded and focused on this one goal that we're trying to achieve. And, and then just by sitting in meditation and being mindful, you get to remember, you know, the beauty and the power and the light that we all have within us. And, and that we always have access to it. We just need to take a moment to really just reconnect to it and to, to remember who we are before, before all of the stuff, before everything that happened. So those are the reasons why I always like to remind people that giving meditation and giving mindfulness a shot just a couple minutes a day will be, you know, something that's so great for you to add to your self-care toolkit. I love it. Thank you so much. Yeah, it can be quite transformative. Um, so I appreciate you giving your insights, Josephine. Thank you for being here today. Thank you oh, so much. My pleasure. Thank you so much for this conversation. And you can find out more about Josephine at j at com. So that's j a t l u r i dot com. And I think one of my favorite things was, I mean, there's so many favorite parts about interviewing um, Josephine, but I think one of my favorite things is toward the end there where she said that meditation helps us recognize and remember the beauty and the power and the light that's within us. That's actually one of the things that I write about in Transcending Infertility is that the light, the light was there the whole time even though I was in such a dark place as we all are on this journey, often um, the light's always there just waiting to be seen and embraced and meditation, mindfulness really helps us to access that. I hope this episode was helpful for you and, and just another perspective on how mindfulness and how meditation can really serve you on your journey. And I encourage you to check out Josephine's site and uh, get more information. All right, as usual, may you be happy and joyful and maybe not completely stress free, but able to manage stress really well through mindful practices. And until next time, my friends, be well. <laughs> <laughs>